in the Fusion 360. Return to the project list by clicking the home icon here. Click the new project button. Assign a name of your project. Just enter to confirm. Double click on the newly created project folder and click the blue upload button here. Select files. Maneuver to where you have your exported file from Rhino. Go open. Make sure that the current location that the model will be uploaded to is correct. Otherwise, change the location. If everything looks good, click Upload to start the uploading. This might take some time. It includes both uploading the file as well as converting it to a Fusion 360 document. When the upload is complete, click Close. To enter the document, double click on it in the left view pane here. The first thing you should do is to expand the document settings and make sure that the units are in millimeter. Having verified that, you may, if you want, inspect by measuring from a point of the intended stock to the other one. And just make sure here, if we scroll, we zoom in. And we can see that this is about 453 millimeters, which is the same as the exported model from Rhino. Thus, we can safely assume that the dimensions are in the scale that we intend to fabricate. Click Close. Having verified that the units are in millimeters, change the workspace from Design to Manufacture. Here, we add a new setup, either by right-clicking on the setups here and clicking New Setup, or by clicking this icon here, or expand it and click this one. Fusion 360 is really nifty and user-friendly that if you hover long enough on practically any option, you will get a pop-up of an explanation of it. Expand this setup to see that we have added this Setup 1 and the Setup 1 options are here to the right. The first thing we should do is, while this tab is open, the Setup tab, you are free to locate the work origin of the document. And the work origin of the document should be the point on the material stock that is immediately above the model origin. So clicking this point to assign it as the work origin, Upon closer look, we see here that this is actually, let's see, if you hold middle mouse button, you can pan. You can see that this, is, this point is actually not precisely above the model's origin, but instead it is slightly offset as the corner of the offset stock. This we can fix in the second tab here called stock. And the mode should be relative size of the imported model, should we have to find it as we should. But the stock side offset here should be changed from 1 mm to 0 mm. This will make sure that the work origin is precisely above the model's origin, as well as making sure that there is no milling underneath the 3 mm bottom margin. The stock top offset should be left at 1 mm, since that is what we have defined also in Rhino, if you remember. Here we see the stock width, depth, and height, the dimensions of it, in millimeters. And if we go back to Rhino and make a bounding box, we can see here that this corresponds perfectly well, except for the Z, with the bounding box of the model. And the discrepancy of one millimeter for the height is that we consciously added one millimeter top margin so as to make sure that all of the top surface is milled at least one millimeter. So adding that one millimeter, we get precisely these values. One thing to point out here is that the stock dimensions as defined here should be within tolerance, of course, identical to the dimensions of the actual material stock that you put on the machine bed. Depending on the diameter of the tool that you are using, the tolerance might be a couple of millimeters or perhaps three or four. 
So with these given stock dimensions, I would suggest for the X and Y dimensions to approach these values and rather on the inclusive side of about perhaps three millimeters tolerance at the most. So this could be anywhere from 453 and a half to 457 perhaps. And this could be all from 363 to 366 perhaps. The thickness of the material should be precisely the stated stock height here, since it is the top surface of the material stock that you will use for calibration of all values for the toolpath before running it. Nothing in the third tab needs to be changed, so having, having selected the point of the stock that is immediately above the model origin and that is co-planar to the top surface, as well as making sure that the offset values are correctly defined, we can simply press OK. Scroll out, we can zoom out with the scroll wheel and pan with the middle mouse button by holding the scroll wheel. Having defined the stock, it's appropriate to save the document. Control and save, Control and S to save. The version description can be defined as you want. This concludes the fourth part of this tutorial series. Importing and setting up a stock in Fusion 360.